It's GED question of the daytime, and this time we've got an ordering problem. Let's take a look. It says order the following numbers from least to greatest. So you'd think this would be a simple little problem. I just got five numbers, and I just have to be able to tell which one's the smallest and which one's the largest. But I have to tell you, this is one of those problems that stumps a ton of students. My screen right is not working. What? There we go. Okay. So I've been asked to order them from least to greatest. So I want to start with my smallest number and get larger as I go on. And it sounds easy enough until I start looking at the numbers and realize they're in different forms. I mean, take a look at this. I have some fractions. I have some percentages. I have a decimal over here. You know, it's easy enough to compare things when they're the same kinds of things, but when they're different kinds of things, well, hmm, that's a different story. So what can I do? Great question. And now, I have to tell you that if I had a calculator available to me, I would do this problem very differently than the way I'm going to do it right now. But I don't have a calculator available to me when I get these ordering questions. These ordering questions, and they usually have fractions and decimals, appear on the non-calculator section of the GED, which means you're going to have some non-calculator skills. Uh, you're going to need to think about these numbers without necessarily crunching any numbers. And that's um, what I'm going to do. Now, I will admit to you right here that a lot of students know the math to do. And if you know the math to do, well, more power to you. But I don't feel like doing ugly division, which would be involved in this problem. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some common sense. Some common sense. I'm going to start with this number three quarters. Three quarters. Have you ever heard three fourths called three quarters? I love calling it three quarters because the second I say, hey, that number can be read as three quarters, then I ask my students, hey, guys, if you had three quarters, how much money do you have? And they go, oh, duck, eight. I would have 75 cents. And I go, oh, yeah? How do we write 75 cents? Well, we write it like that. Uh, 70.75. Um, why? Because it's 75 hundredths of a dollar. If you break a dollar into a hundred pieces, they're cents, right? So 75 cents is 75 hundredths of a dollar. And so um, one way to think about three quarters is this 0.75. So that's kind of an easy way to think about things. Um, now, people tell me, well, but I don't understand percents, Kate. Well, let's think about this. So let's look at the next one, 25%. Now, 25%, what does percent mean? Well, a lot of you guys have memorized that percent means out of 100, 25 out of 100. And that's true. Um, but another way to think of something out of 100 is to realize that per means the same as divide. We even use a little slash and a percent like we do to say slash for divide. And literally, 25% means 25 hundredths, 25 out of a hundred or 25 hundredths. And so just like you could write 25 cents using that decimal in a, a dollar, you can write 25 percent the same way with that decimal place, 0.25. And right now, I'm going to start my arranging. I have three numbers here that I know are less than one. All these things I've put into decimal form I know are less than one. This one's less than one, this one's less than one, and I know this one's less than one. The other two numbers here I know are greater than one. This one's obviously greater than one because it's two and something, huh? Two and a fifth. But this one I also know is greater than one. Well, how do I know that? Remember what a fraction bar means. Three halves or three out of two. The two here means that every whole thing I have is broken into two pieces. And look at this. I have three halves. I have more than one whole. I have one two, two halves makes a whole, and three halves. So I have like more than one. I have one and a piece or one and a half. Um, and so I know that this thing is bigger than one. So I'm going to start numbering my numbers uh, that are less than one. So I'll start with the point zero zero nine eight five. And some students struggle to look at this. If you struggle to look at decimals, just try ignoring the end decimals. 
It's the decimal place that determines a number's value. So this nine is like in the nine cents place, which means those two numbers, numbers that I scribbled out, those are even smaller than cents. Imagine breaking a penny into pieces, not very valuable, and they don't make much difference. So ignoring them will not throw you off much. So that's my smallest number. It's just about a little more than nine cents. And then of course I have my 25% because we said that was like 25 cents. And I have my three quarters because we said that was like 75%. And now let's deal with our two numbers that are bigger than one, bigger than one. So I've got two numbers bigger than one. Well, we already said this was two and some nonsense. And when we looked at our picture of three halves, we were able to draw one hole with our two halves and then we ended up with an extra half. So three halves is the same as one and a half. So it's a little bit more than one. So it'll come next. And then finally, my number that's a little bit more than two will come next. And you can see that I managed to order these fractions using some common sense instead of having to do a bunch of calculations. And could I have done calculations? Yeah, I could have. Um, there would have been a lot of long division if you learned the long way to do these problems. And that's fine too. There's nothing wrong with the long way. I'm just lazy. So there is my final answer, y'all. Um, that first, that tiny little decimals first, the one that was about nine cents, then 25%, three quarters, three halves, and two and one fifth. Great. If you have any questions about this, be sure to drop them in the comments.